Namaskar, Aditya here. Today I'm going to answer 10 most common questions every new immigrant has when it comes to buying a house in Canada. For example, you know, do I have to buy or rent? How much down payment do I need? Do I need a permanent residency? Those kind of things. While having my Indian ginger chai. Question number one, the most common question I've been asked, you know what, would you recommend buying a house or renting the house? You know, I have a really solid biased answer. I personally strongly recommend buy a house because when you're renting a house, you're literally taking money from your pocket and throwing out of window because that rent, you're not getting it back ever. It's just gone forever. Whereas when you're buying a house, now the biggest advantages come into place now first of all you have a physical asset a home that you own it's on your name and on top of that you're paying down mortgage every month so which means you're building equity you're building money under your home so th that of course you cannot pull it right away but the money is been built like you're so you're just like saving money in on your house so every month you're putting five hundred dollars or thousand dollars on the house that goes towards your equity will be saved and second benefit is on an average every five to ten years the properties appreciate you know over the time you know for example the house that i'm living in i got this for three hundred thousand uh, one and a half year ago and right now my house value is over four hundred thousand so I have that 100,000 appreciation. If I would not purchase this house, or if I just rented the house, pretty much I'm just paying the rent and the rent is gone nowhere. Of course, you need money to buy the house. You know, that's another thing. If you don't have money to buy a house, see if you can find creative ways. But if you couldn't find any way, of course, rent it. Because for rent, you don't need money for like you know has a down payment you don't need money for closing cost all those there is no upfront cost to live so of course it's good to rent initially but always aim to buy a house second question do i need permanent residency to buy a house or can i just buy it with a work permit so you know here's the thing i got my first property when i'm working when i'm on work status I'm not saying that everyone on work status will qualify, but I know that most of them do qualify if you have a job for more than a month or more than a year or so. So just make sure you consult a mortgage agent, see if you would qualify to get a mortgage. Question number three, how much down payment do I need to buy a house? So in Canada, we have a first time home buyer program. Through that program, you can buy a house for as less as possible, which is like literally for 5% down. Which means if you are looking at buying a house that is priced at 500,000, all you need is $25,000 from your pocket and the rest you can get a mortgage from a bank like CABC, Scotia, RBC or anyone. There are many lenders out there who are willing to help first time home buyers which leads to question number four which is when you're paying five percent down you will be having an additional cmhc insurance or genworth insurance so you will have insurance on your mortgage insurance not for your house it's insurance for the mortgage so the question is do i have that insurance by paying five percent down or why don't i pay 20 percent down where you don't need cmhc so here's my answer. I know most of them don't like my answer, but I will give it anyways. Um, so when you're buying a house, you're leveraging your money. What I mean by that, you're putting 5% down, which is in my previous example, $25,000 and buying a $500,000 property. And over the period, your mortgage is paying down by your monthly payments. So you leverage your 5,000 
indirectly that's your investment to buy a product and that product will be paid over time and the house is yours by once you done paying the mortgage so all of a sudden you have 500,000 but you made that 500,000 only with 25,000 down whereas when you pay 20% down which means you are buying the same house for 100,000 so now your rate of return is way low compared to 5% but again it has the downsides where you are paying a little bit extra like probably 20 or 30 dollars extra for CMHC insurance again I personally don't mind paying that because I know how to leverage my money you know by investing that money and buying some rental properties if you are curious about rental properties I have other videos check out those but again that's my opinion I know if you don't like to have too much debt on your name if you want to reduce your mortgage then go for 20 percent down you know it's there is no obligations it's it really depends on your financial situation point number five very common question that you will be asked if you start looking to like you know working with an agent which is what type of property do you want to buy condo or semi-detached or detached or townhome you know all this options are available out there for you uh, of course you know in my opinion every type has pros and cons so it really depends on your financial situation uh, but i'll try to make another video because that will take more than 10 minutes to talk about pros and cons of every type so stay tuned for another video on that topic and point number six do i buy a resale home or a new construction so i'm glad you asked because you know most of the houses i purchased are resale homes resale homes the biggest advantage is you can like move in within like 60 days as soon as you make an offer you have a property on contract you can move in because it's already built it's already there when it comes to new construction of course um, you have to again some new constructions might be already ready to move in and some of them probably you might have to wait for like one year or two years so it really depends on your financial situation right if you can afford a new construction of course new construction now you have the house is coming with with a warranty like a tarian warranty that's in canada uh, every new home new built home by a builder professional builder should like must have that warranty given to the customer so what does that mean basically you can have a peace of mind by saying that oh if there is something comes up probably that tarian warranty will cover the wear and tear issues in the first year i believe first year and second year don't go to unmute that I'm, I'm pretty sure at least one year and then like major structural things for like seven years so and on top of that you will not have any major expenses like you know furnace breakdown or roof uh, because most of the things will start breaking down after 15 years so that means once you buy a new home you are like worry free for like next 15 years whereas resale home again it really depends on if the property is when it was updated if it's recently updated everything was updated then awesome but generally resale home values are way you know comparatively cheaper than new construction homes so at the end it's more like your personal preference if you love to live in a new home you have time and you have money to put in then go for a new home and point number seven what's the step-by-step -step process to buy my first home because you know there are so many things involved in the process right so i know again this is another full content video but i already made i'll have a link somewhere here a full step-by-step -step details in order for you to go buy a home question number eight where is the best location to buy you know i know this is such a interesting question because every location has different prices and in real estate the location does matter but I'm gonna give you a really common sense answer. Trust me, first of all, where are you living? Where do you like to see yourself living for long run, right? If you're living in Toronto, if you wanna buy a house in Windsor to live, then it doesn't make sense, right? You're working in Toronto, you love to live in Toronto, but why do you wanna buy a house in Windsor, which is like four hours away from? So of course, buy 
in the area where you're living. Even in those areas, there will be different type of neighborhoods. So here's a simple thing that I learned from beginning days of my investing. Always go for the best location, even if the property needs some work. Go for the best locations because when you are in the best locations, of course, you will be having best schools and you know best environment for your kids. But at the same time, it's also best for your money because in the best neighborhoods, always the appreciation is way more competitive to average neighborhoods or below average neighborhoods. So if you have to compromise on the like features of the house, I would strongly recommend don't compromise on the location. It's okay to compromise on little features in the house because which you can add by yourself or, or you can hire a contractor once you purchase the house but you cannot move the whole house and put it into a different neighborhood, right? So always look for a neighborhood that is either established or you know that that particular neighborhood is up and coming. You know, always ask these questions to your realtor, whoever you're working with. Hey, what's the up and coming best neighborhood in this area? Or what's the best neighborhood already established? And then choose from there on. And question number nine, What's the best time to buy a home? Is it in winter, summer? Okay, I'm glad you asked because you know, in winter, the supply is low and at the same time, people also like number of people looking at the houses also low. And in summer, generally the supply is more. There will be more number of houses coming to the market because you know, summer is the like a holidays for kids. So it's easy to move and the schools generally start once the summer ends so the new grade or, or the semester whatever starts after summer so moving is a lot easier so that's the time when people there are a lot of people selling and at the same time there will be a lot of people buying so i i know i put you in a tricky situation where both the times is pretty similar because there is low supply and low demand high supply and high demand so here's my point for buying a house never wait it's my strong recommendation especially if it's your first home see look for you know make your list of things that you like to feel like a home all those things and then find the property that fits your needs if you find a property go buy it don't wait for timing even my favorite investor all-time investor he says that it's hard to time the market one buffet so i would say the same thing to you guys forget about timing just make sure you have your criteria list make sure you go hunt for that particular property another last and final common question is how long do i have to wait to buy a house i know i covered about pr but this is a really more common question is oh i have a pr i came to canada now i got a job i want to buy a house yes absolutely you can buy a house once you have a pr once you have a job but the thing is, just make sure you have a stable income. Just make sure, you know, if you haven't settled down, first get to know the location. Don't rush too much, but at the same time, don't wait on making the decision. It's not scary. It's, I know it's scary when you're looking for the first time, but once you purchase it, it's just now you feel like, oh, that's it. I already have a home now. So it just happens. So my suggestion is, yes wait for few months and make sure you understand few things in the country because you're totally new but once you knew the stuff and once you qualify for the mortgage then go start hunting for the property and have become a homeowner because that's the best feeling in the world to have a own home on your name so so these are all the common questions that i came up with by looking online and also my personal questions I had when I was looking for but if I haven't covered something let me know in the comments below if you have more questions regarding you know buying a house or investment property anything let me know in the comments below I'll do my best to cover those questions and help you to become a homeowner help you to buy more investment properties to build a wealth and a bright financial freedom for yourself. So with that, thank you so much for taking time to go through all these things. And I'm pretty sure if you watch till here, that means you are gonna become a homeowner pretty soon. So congratulations on that.